like as I move into this content marketing role, I see a lot of other marketing people that haven't had experience with social media. And when they want, they created this awesome video and they want to share it, they don't know how. They give the canned, you know, watch this video now, marketing jargon, and, it's, and the social media manager has to completely fix it to make it, you know, more personable and more conversational. So I think having experience in social media now will help you in any career moving forward because eventually every single role will have to think about how is this video going to look on social media, how will it be shared, how is this, um, you know, song on iTunes going to look if somebody like shares it on Facebook and Twitter, is the copy looking right, um, how is, you know, if, if you're on Nordstrom's and you see a shoe, you know, how can you, and then they pin that shoe, what kind of copy do you need to have in that pin button in order to get searched somewhere else, so I think these skill that you're going to get in social media now will help you in your career longer term, no matter what role or path you go into. <coughs> I think the future's in emojis. Yes. <laughs> well, what I've learned from writing for almost two years for iTunes feeds, there's like nine or ten of them, is that once somebody gets excited about something that you write about and responds well, they want to do it over and over and over again. And that's not exactly how you bore your audience. So you just kind of like take the W, move on to the next thing, try to find the next cool thing that people are going to respond to. So, I don't know how to, how to react to what's the trend, because the trends change all the time, and then you're on to the next thing already, you know? But how are you keeping abreast of that? Like, how are you... Uh, well, we have, they have an entire side of the building where that looks at the analytics and the metrics and what performs and what doesn't perform, so we presented that on a regular occasion. We try to react to those and predict. But, if it goes, sometimes it happens, works, sometimes it doesn't. So being open to testing, trying, yeah. seeing how things work out. Yeah, yeah. That's always good. Take some risks. Take a lot of risks. So, are there any professional associations, meetups, like, you know, if someone wanted to kind of be surrounded by more professional social media experts, are there things that you guys kind of do to keep in contact or keep your networks up? It's probably a little hard at the entry level. Like a lot of the networks that have participated now are more like people who are already social media managers, and we're all asking each other questions about the the struggles that we face. Um, I would say getting started, your best bet is to find different uh, blogs and fan pages that are talking about social. So I really like Social Media Examiner, um, AllFacebook.com. Obviously, Mashable always has a ton of great content, and what you want to look for are case studies based on what companies have already done. And that way you can learn like what are some of the best practices or alternatively like looking at what some companies have done that have flopped. So like terrible stories often result in big improvements to social media programs for companies. There are so many companies that their entire social program started from, oh, this awful thing happened to us, like Dell, the laptop that caught on fire. Now Dell is one of the best social media companies and they sell their social media monitoring solutions to other companies. Um, in terms of professional networks, I know there's PRSA, and I think that's good for getting started. Once people get more entrenched in their career, sometimes they don't have time for networking, so it's a little bit difficult in that sense, but just becoming involved in whatever network that you're on to get that loose one or two degree intro that you need to start getting to know more people is helpful. Okay, and since we're talking trends, before I open it up for questions from the audience, um, I'm going to ask you guys some just quick questions, okay? And we're gonna play. Can't get enough or make it stop. Can't get enough or make it stop. <laughs> yeah. So I'm gonna show you an image, and I guess you guys can't see the image because it's above your head. So I will describe it. But I want you to just tell me if you can't get enough of the social media trend, or if you want to make it stop. Easy. Good. Yeah. Okay. Sorry that you guys have. Oh, that didn't even come out good. Huh? Are you happy enough? That, that is supposed to be Kim Kardashian. It's, it's a tease. Yeah. <laughs> so, can't get enough of Kim Kardashian or make it stop? Social media. And I only say that because, sadly, I follow multiple Kardashians on Instagram. And I want to, yeah, and so what, what happened was, once one of them posts, then the other one posts, and then they're all posting, it's like, I get it. I came to her party too, because I saw the pictures. So that could be 
So you have a favorite Kardashian? No, oh. I actually now hate them all, but I can't throw away. <laughs> so you can't make it stuff. I, I'm full of shit. Okay. <laughs> all right. Is anyone on the can't get enough? No. Okay. Let's see if my next picture works. Okay. Hashtags. Mm -hmm. On Twitter, yes. Not on Facebook. Yeah. Okay, not on Facebook, on Twitter, yes. Yes. Can you weigh in on hashtags? I'm not, I'm not, I can't get enough. Can't get enough. Uh, yeah. okay. Except maybe, you know, one or two. You know, yes. don't, don't make it like a, a river, flowing river of hashtags. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that picture works though. Yeah. I just want you to know. Okay. Smiling. Oh, make it stop. No, no, no. no, no, no. <laughs> We can't stop, like she says. We can't stop. So we have a fan. Okay. I had to put it out there. She's always on my feet. Okay. Selfies. Make it stop. You guys want to make it stop too? Okay. Also, this dude, like, we actually, one of our conferences, two years ago, one of our speakers wanted to do, like, the Ellen selfie, and it was a huge hit. Everybody loved it. This year, people kept doing it over and over again, and it's numbing. It's no longer impactful. So, like, make it stop. <laughs> see, see, I feel like that's a trend. So you got to be aware of those things when things get old, so that you just don't rehash them and kill your audience. Okay, throwback Thursday. Keep it going. Can't yeah. get enough. Yeah. Can't get enough. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. And we're gonna end with. Can't <laughs> <laughs> oh, get enough. Like Rocky Cat. Okay, so animals, cute animals are still okay. All right. So thank you guys for your insights. And now it's your turn. So I am going to have John take the mic and pass it to you guys if you want to ask a question. And our panelists will oblige. Any questions? Should I pass it to you? impressions, which you can get a different version of that metric on every network. Um, Twitter.com has analytics, analytics.twitter.com, you can check it out, try starting, try starting a Twitter profile and you can see it. It shows you potential impressions. Facebook told, shows you reach for your posts. Google Analytics shows you the page views um, and sessions on your blog post. So that would show you awareness. Um, if your goal is driving new leads, then maybe what you care about is clicks on the Billy link that you included in your tweet. So it's really more about saying, what am I trying to do? What's my end game? And then finding the metrics that map to that. Because just like you said, you could keep capturing analytics all day long, but to what end? Hi, my name is Christine. Um, I just had a question about what your opinion on Reddit is and how people are using it now for like animes to promote things like that. That's hard to read. I think Reddit's awesome. I think there's a lot of really great talent that's getting on there. Like Bill Gates is on there. Tons of huge, you know, huge celebrities, and um, I think it's a really great way. And I love that the Reddit community calls people out if they're not honest. You know, so like we we're saying, being skeptical, skeptical of marketing, you can't be marketing-esque on there. You have to be completely honest. Um, you can't give a marketing answer or the Reddit community will kind of jump on you. So that part of it, I love. that's what I like about it. Uh, my name is Leslie. Uh, I have a specific question for all of you. 
Uh, I'm now an MBA student at Southern State University. And uh, before MBA program, I have over six years working experience as a media planner in the digital advertising industry in China. Uh, so my question is, um, are there any uh, job positions in your company that require some uh, working experience in China? Um, for example, a, a project coordinator who need to communicate with uh, team folks in the U.S. and in China, uh, or do you have an uh, account or planning teams based in the U.S. Um, but serving Chinese client? Thank you. Um, actually, our company, we Roku is manufactured in China, so we actually have an entire team that works with that team and travels constantly. Um, I don't know if they have something open right now, but if you talk to me after, I can take a look at our jobs for you. <laughs> and same thing at LinkedIn is LinkedIn overall is expanding in China, and within like the talent solutions side of the business that I work in, it's growing. Um, so I mean, again, like I don't know the answer, but. I'm but overall, China is growing in a lot of social networks. Hi, my name is Simone. I was just going to say, yeah, social media wise, we don't see anything happening in China for a while. But I think that is. Hi. Hi, my name is Simone. I'm a grad student, a student of India, Master of Public Administration, and I do. Volunteer for a small nonprofit. Our is like really small nonprofit, and we, we do not have too much funds for advertising and stuff like that. So I was wondering, uh, we have Twitter, Facebook, and, and yeah, no, that's uh, What would be a good strategy to get more donors uh, now that the Christmas is coming? So I was trying to know a little bit about it. So what would be a good strategy? reach to more people. We are really a, an obscure kind of nonprofit in the sense we are a data company um, who serves uh, companies who serve homeless people. So it's, it's really hard to tell the story. So uh, what would be a good start? We have to dig into that a little bit more. Maybe we can chat afterwards and we can toss around some ideas. How do specific? We need a little more info. Hello, my name is Matt. Um, it's actually a two-part question, if you don't mind. The uh, first part is, um, well, you just kind of answered earlier, but aside from networking, would there be any recommendations you would make for someone trying to get into the world of social media? Or, for example, for someone who doesn't have much experience in the social media world? And then the second part would be, what what is the extent of someone getting into uh, a position like social media, like where would it take you? Like what kind of things you can do with it beyond that? I think you are part of the social media. <laughs> you know, if you've got a Facebook page or a LinkedIn or Twitter, you're part of it. So I kind of I gave the uh, example of taking over a friend's band's web page or if there's a business you like whose Facebook is not doing well. And offer to take it over for them and see how well you can do it and maybe you can work together and you know build up your the audience and the expectations and you know, just keep going with it. I mean I didn't have any social media experience at all when I got to Apple. And it, it, just from all the years of doing journalism and writing cut lines and headlines and um, photo captions, things like that just kind of boils down to the essence of a large subject with a nice sturdy concise line help me the most. So I don't think anybody goes into it wanting to be in social media. We just ended up in social media. So you're not alone. I wanted to add something quick to that too. Um, I think internships are so valuable and when you start an internship there's not the expectation that you're going to be the social media expert but that you're there to learn and apply the skills that you've learned in class or in your projects or activities. So definitely, if you're just curious, take a look at the positions that are open in your packet right now, because these are open right now on Sparta jobs, and there's internships, 
you know, communication, social media policy and research, event planning and social media intern, um, PR and social media intern, social media coordinator, um, and there's a lot that are really entry level. So don't be shy about applying for these positions if you have an interest in them. And come to the Career Center if you want us to help you, you revamp your resume, make sure you have the right skill sets that the panelists talked about today because we can help you get your competitive edge and really get um, those positions. Um, did you have anything to add? Yeah, I would say also um, there are a lot of nonprofits and a lot of like either community work or religious organizations that are looking for help with social media, sort of like you were saying. Um, so feel free to volunteer for those because the, the asks are usually pretty small, but any contribution you give is really meaningful. Is there a question for the ad box? Uh, sure. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Yes. And then I think the gentleman over here, you guys need some love over there. Uh, what is your opinion on trolling as far as companies go, and how did that fine line between bothering the customer, the um, customers or the followers, and how that works? Who's trolling the user or the customer of the company? Who's the troll? The company. Is We're trolls? No, <laughs> not you, not your companies, but in general. Like um, I see that a lot in sports companies and stuff like that. Right. On their Twitter they troll. Like they're trolling their followers. Yes. Because their followers are being ridiculous. It just kind of goes with it that it's built a following. Okay, I think it yeah. So I think it depends on your brand. Like, if it doesn't match your brand persona, I wouldn't try it because that that falls under that bucket of inauthenticity. If you're trying to like show up wearing something that isn't you, you'll be called out for that. If it is you, if it matches your company persona, go for it. But just be prepared for um, potentially some backlash. There's just a lot of delicacy when you're trolling people because you never know what their story is, what their background is, and you could really end up with a horrible PR firestorm. Yeah, I think there's a balance of like surprising and delighting like your followers versus like trolling them. So make sure you're, uh, you have that authentic you know, piece to it before you go and reach out to your followers and start asking them questions and getting them engaged. Yeah. It was the one here and then these two gentlemen will take this one. Hi, uh, my name is Isadora, also from the Spartan Advertising Club. And my question to you is, how um, are some like tips that you can give to brand ourselves? Because like as students, we get to work with some projects here and there. We get to work with some internships and stuff. But I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one who have been doing that. I'm pretty sure there's a bunch of students who are sharp, are doing um, all that they can. So how to call it the attention of um, recruiters and how, how to brand yourself if you want to go on a career path social media or in all communications out there. So I have a couple of tips from LinkedIn. Um, so what, there's two areas in the profile that you can do to kind of show off those projects and really start to brand yourself. Um, not only just filling out the basic profile, but also um, you can link to like articles you've written, projects you've posted online, um, and they have like really beautiful like visual displays. So like any blog post that I write or any video that I produce or um, like a you know tip sheet that I write or an article that I write, I include that in my LinkedIn profile. And so it kind of starts to brand you as these are some pieces of work that I've done. And then the second piece is there's um, the publishing platform on LinkedIn. So if like building a blog is way too intimidating, um, you can just start by publishing like you know blog posts on LinkedIn and LinkedIn reach is great. And you can just post things like, here are five things I learned in my semester in social media. Um, and you know, kind of talking about the key takeaways you got from that class and how you're gonna apply them. Um, so I think those are two good ways to start like brand your, branding yourself as like, a, you know, I am an upcoming social media professional, and here are the things I'm learning, and here are the things I want to do. I would say just assume that whoever you want to see you has 10 seconds, 10 seconds to understand everything about you. So if when they first Google you, or when they first go to your LinkedIn page, or if they find your Facebook profile, they need to be able to see in those 10 seconds why you're good, and why you're good for this position specifically. So don't try to overwhelm them with everything about you and everything you've ever done. Narrow it down to just what's the most important thing about you. <laughs> and I was just gonna say another thing, you know, if you send your resume in, and it's for a social media role, say at Roku, you know, maybe point to a blog post like these are, 
you know, I wrote a post about the most binge-worthy seasons to watch, you know, link to it, or, hey, I just wrote like three or four posts for you just to give you an idea of like, my writing style and how I think I would be a good fit for your brand and, you know, anything like that, just a little, going a little bit, that, giving the extra mile, like it just, it makes such a difference, again, as you're looking through piles of resumes and emails. I would totally respond to that if somebody said to me, here are some posts that I think would be good for your movie CD. And uh, you click the link for the, uh, the movie. I would totally read that. And maybe we could have a dialogue and say, well, I wouldn't just say it this way. I'd probably say it this way. Or I would say, oh, man, that was perfect. I like this part. We could get this part different. You know, I would totally do that. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
So I want to make sure that you have some things that you want to talk to them individually about. But if there's a career question in the back there, making eye contact with someone way back there. I'm making John work today. This is your exercise. Thank you. Hi. Uh, my name is Crystal. I'm graduating in December. Um, and my question is, so you said you worked closely with your recruiting teams and things like that. I was just wondering, how important is it where someone went to school? Because you guys don't really say, I mean, we're great students, you know, but we are competing with the Ivy League kids and we're competing with Stanford and on a lot of the application I've been sending in, the, the requirements are, you know, top tier school, things like that. So kind of, how important is it and what can we do to stand out amongst all the Ivy Leaguers and private school kids? Well, fortunately, the, the education is usually at the bottom. And usually to hit us, especially for somebody like editorial, it's got to be in like the first couple of months. So I don't, we don't, I personally don't wait too much on the school because, hey, I'm San Jose State, I made it. But if San Jose State, we can make it too. Uh, so if they went to Harvard, yeah, they went to Harvard, great. But do they have that, you know, do they have, can they, can they bring it? Do they have good, uh, can they write well? Can they get my attention? Can they hold my attention? Do you, do what I trust them to, to be in, in, take over a few of ours. So, at least from my own personal thing for editorial, education is way down here. It's all the stuff up here that counts. Yeah, I mean, the, that's a real that's a real struggle. And I saw when I was first starting out. I see it now with a lot of students. And I think that if if you have a dream company that you want to work at, but you know that they only recruit at you know those five schools, then play the long game and go to another company that's maybe a little bit smaller that doesn't have that those same kind of like uh, prejudices and do the job that you are that you want to get to kick ass at it be great commit yourself do everything that you can to be wonderful and then apply for the job at the company that you want to work at so be okay with maybe making a step ladder i think right now we're kind of in this this expectation that like we want everything we want we want it now but when it comes to work, like you really do have to play the long game. I'll let you choose and be that guy. Oh my gosh. Okay. So, yeah, the, so we have um, questions from the Twitter feed. Yeah. Okay, let's right. go over to our question from the Twitter feed. Uh, I know you guys talked about traveling, um, but can you describe a typical day in your social media career job? I'll tell you about today. So I'll tell you about, so you had asked about like nine to five. I would say this is at least nine to five. This is like 24 hours a day. So last night I was at the office until 10.30 p.m. checking emails until 1 a.m. And then I was in the office again this morning at 7 a.m. for an announcement. And I left, but I'm still checking email on the train ride the whole way down and I'm still getting texts right now. So the days, like depending on if you have a big news announcement or if a crisis happens, like there is no end to the day. You're just always on. A normal day, you may have some content that you've pre-planned that you're publishing and promoting and you're handling all the comments that come in, but there, it's not a, if you're looking for like a check-in, check-out job, this is not it. If you're looking for a job that's really thrilling and exciting and you're, you have the pulse in a way that nobody else in the company does, then this is it. Are there any questions that came in? Uh, yeah. uh, I'm just curious to know, what would be the best part of your job and then conversely, what's also the worst part of your job? <laughs> I think the worst part is that like you're always on. So, but I think one of the best parts is and this is an example that happened um, a few weeks ago um, for LinkedIn. I work in the talent solution side of the business. We had a big customer conference, and there is a woman named Robin Erickson, and she is um, you know uh, she spoke at our conference and. She joined Twitter last year just to tweet with us at the conference and use our hashtag and everything. And she was our most active tweeter at the conference this year with like over 170 tweets in three days. And you know, like people were really engaging with her, her following grew, and she was like, this is my Twitter anniversary, I'm so excited, like I'm so hooked on social media, can't wait to tweet more. And like, you know, she took photos of everything and we had this social media wall where you can see your tweets and Instagrams kind of funnel through at the conference, so everybody that participated can kind of get the 15 seconds of name. And she tweeted, my tweet on the wall of tweets, and just, you know, like seeing people very happy and like engaging with us really kind of warms my heart, even if it's, you know, something little where it's a Twitter history. It, mm -hmm. it just, I don't know, those meaningful connections. 
But this part, just the actual writing, because you actually get to sit down and listen to new records and like movies and TV shows and get exposed to music that you would normally listen to. And then, like, a the oldest person, 40 years old, that knows who Bobby Shmurda is. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> And uh, the one that, thing that keeps me the most focus is that Tim Cook, our CEO, subscribes or follows nine of my feeds out of, I don't know, probably 30 feeds, like besides Auburn football. And, and uh, yeah, so there's a lot of, uh, if something goes wrong, it falls right on me. Because he, he's, he's got it right there. I don't know how often he's checked his Twitter feed. Mm -hmm. But if he happens to check his feed, Twitter feed, he's got a, a bunch of our feeds running through his. So that, that keeps me motivated. At the same time, it's also the best thing and the worst thing. It's like, wow, he, he found it in his time to follow all of our feet. But then if I screw up, I'm done for, man. So I try to keep a very tight, tight rein on these things. So that's a good motivation too. Okay, I lost my Hi, I'm an alumni from San Jose State, and I'm in class with Professor Pixel. But I'm a stay-at-home mom, so how do you get an internship when you're going part-time to San Jose State again? And you already have your degree, um, it seems like it's very difficult. So what is your recommendations or advice for that? I've seen a lot of contract jobs come up recently where they're looking for like part-time content creators. So if you're a strong writer and you can pump out a lot of content quickly, that's a great way to get your foot in the door in a company. I think I just saw one come in from, from Autodesk. I mean, I live in the city, so a lot of the jobs I see are, are up there, but there are definitely a lot of companies that maybe are small or don't have a big budget, but they know they need some help, especially creating new content. So if you're a great writer, that could be a, a great foot in the door. You also might want to check out the blog Her Network. Great, so you, if you already have a portfolio of content that you created, it's a great way to um, introduce yourself for some of those contract jobs. Also, what's that? Blog her, like blog, instead of blog she, blog her, B O L G H E R. It's a network of uh, female bloggers it's kind of tied together. Um, so she, she's not responding, she's just analyzing them, and we have a tool called Sysimo, 